This is what they have turned the youth into. Look at this picture. It is very sad. Minister owns 53 buildings, 11 bank accounts, and 39 vehicles. One person. And embezzled 23 point something billion francs CFA. This is why the youths are traveling. This is why they are living, taking perilous journeys, dying at the Mediterranean Sea. In their numbers, thousands of them yearly die just trying to make it to Europe. Dying at the Sahara Desert, abandoned at, in Morocco, abandoned. Some of them captured in Libya and tortured. This is what they have put the youths into. Look at this is the picture. The youths are frustrated. They are leaving the continent with everything gold, oil, fertile land, diamond, everything. We have everything in Africa. But they are living out of frustration. Who is to be blamed for this mass migration, illegal migration? Who is to be blamed? Why are the youths living in Africa? The first thing is the government. Our African leaders are greedy. They are wicked, they are tribalistic, egocentric. They make policies that don't even favor the youth, it only favors the rich. They stay in power, and when they are in power, they make sure that they loot everything in the coffers, everything embezzled. They promote corruption because when you speak against it, you're killed. They stay in power and they put their family members, brothers and sisters in power. They put their tribes person, tribesman in power tribalism, nepotism, bad leadership. So what happens? It only brings a nation where everyone wants to be corrupt. You want to get to... Jobs are not gotten by meritocracy. You have to know someone to know someone. You have to tow political lines. It has to be about politics. Which party do you belong to? Would you favor? This is what is killing Africa. The second person to be blamed it's the West. Because they sense the greed and understand the greed of African leaders. What do they do? They come to everyone is rushing to Africa. China is rushing to Africa. The Europeans are rushing to Africa. America is rushing to Africa. Even the Qataris, those in Saudi Arabia, the, the Arabs, everyone is rushing to Africa. Every country thinks Africa, they have something to get from Africa. Why? Because they sense the greed of our leaders. Because they understand that all the leaders want is money to enrich their families and to stay in power. So they, what do they do? They come and they make trade deals that are not bilateral, trade deals that are not fair. Look at the cocoa sector. Look at how the, 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 the price at which cocoa is sold. It doesn't favor the farmers. Who cares? The leaders don't care. The farm, cocoa farmers are suffering. Who cares? Nobody cares. This is what Africa has been reduced to. Greed. So these leaders come and take away our resources, everything we have, the gold, the, the cocoa, the everything, they take it over. And then they are the highest manufacturers of jewelry. They are the highest producer of, of chocolate. If you don't give them this, they won't give you aid and they won't support your political campaign. You won't be your favorite. They want people that will stay in power. So they continue looting for Africa. They continue taking, exploiting Africans. The next person to be blamed is you, the youths listening to me. If you are a young person out there, you are the next person to be blamed. We can't put the blame only on the government and the, the West, the Europeans and the US. No, even you, the youth listening to me, you have a role to play in the development of your nation. When things get bad and difficult, that is when we all have to stand strong and, as youth and say, I'm going to be that change in my own nation. The countries today you see surviving and thriving were never perfect. They went through a system of corruption just like we are going through it right now. But they didn't pack their bags and took journeys that they knew that they could die on the way. To put their family through pain, they didn't do that. Most of them stayed back in their nations and looked for solutions and were innovative and decided they were going to make it. Just like I know so others, so there's youths in Africa that are vibrant, that have made a conscious decision to stay back in Africa, irrespective of the challenges, to say they will stay back and make Africa better. They are using at, at, at have amazing startups that is changing lives. They are youths like that. They are youths that are in political positions right now because they fought through tears and pain and said they are going to change the continent. 
But you choose to use a perilous journey, to take a perilous journey because you think being in this in Spain and the US, you are going to have money. But sometimes all that matters in life is not about money. It's also about the legacy that you leave as a person on earth. Because the money will come and go. At the end of the day, you'll be buried in a very small, shallow grave. And I mean, that's all about life. But what is the legacy you left behind as a young person? What is the legacy? So we all, as youth, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. The agricultural sector is a very important sector that has massive opportunities. Because we have the land, 65% of the world's land is in Africa, arable land, which means we have the land to cultivate and grow crops. As young people, we must look at this sector and don't despise it. We must look at it and say, I can do something from this sector. I can make something out of my life. And then we go into it and transform the sector. The average age of a farmer is 55 years in Africa. What happens when our mothers and fathers will die? The sector is going to crumble. So we need youth. We need your energy. We need your zeal. We need your intelligence. Let us not give in to challenges of life because we have to see them as opportunities and stand strong and say we are going to make it no matter what the government does no matter the corruption the embezzlement we are going to make it and someday we can change our nation someday we can have young leaders who are visionaries i want to say this to the west Coming to Africa and giving it to show that you are a nice nation or coming to Africa to give us loans and think you are bailing us out. Coming to Africa and getting trade deals that are biased and, and not fair. I mean, all these different trade deals. You think you are harming Africa. The truth about it is that you are not harming Africa. Because they are at your doorsteps already. Two million migrants are the U.S. border. Two million. Record number. And Spain is having a huge issue in terms of refugee, refugees and migrants issues in Spain and so many other countries in Europe. Serious issues. They are at your doorstep. Sometimes you think you're killing someone when you come to their house, you steal from them. When you steal from them and take away everything they have, then they have nothing to lose. They will be at your doorstep to get what you took from them. And this situation will only get worse. If something is not done, you always find them at your doorstep. And I hope when you do, don't send them away. Because even if you send them, they will still keep coming. The refugee crisis now is bad. Thousands of migrants are losing their lives. Just to make it at your border, you can imagine the level of desperation and frustration a lot of youth in Africa are. What they face right now. So it is time for you, if you want to solve the migrant crisis, it is time for you to be able to do what? To do things genuinely in Africa. If we have fair trade, and everything was fine. Then migrants, you will not find Africans leaving their country because of war. Why do we have conflicts in Africa? It's because of poverty, frustration. There are no jobs. So this is why we have conflicts. A, a hungry man is an angry man. A hopeless man has nothing to lose. So they go to the street and they pick up guns and weapons. They fight the system in place, thinking the system in place it will change. I mean, they will still get the old system back. So I think it is time we look at these issues. So we don't go through this. This is really bad. This is suffering. This is people. How can someone lose hope to the extent of just being ready to die? You don't care about their lives. If they don't make it to that destination, they prefer to die. How can it? Mother with children. Mother with children. Children, adults. Like, how is this possible? It's frustration. We need change at all levels. At the level of the government, we need good leadership. At the level of the youth, we need leadership. At the level of the international community, we need leadership. We need honesty. We need integrity. See us like your brothers. Thank you for watching this video. And make sure you follow me for 